her cousin Florrie, who'd gone off on a holiday to see the pyramids. As Aunt Agatha said, a fat lot Florrie cared for the cause. Just pleasure mad. Egypt, indeed. If she'd chosen to go to India, at least it would have been patriotic, with the Durbar on. The Delhi Durbar of 1911. Now there was something never to be seen again. Under a blazing sun, the gleam of gold and silver, the sparkle of the precious stones, all the glory and color of princes and potentates, wealthy beyond imagination, all trooping into India's capital to pay homage to the newly crowned King Emperor George V. But for the spectacular, you didn't have to travel as far as India. In those days, before all the crowned heads of Europe, was no empty phrase. The blare of trumpets, tossing plumes, the glint of swords, breastplates and golden eagles, of such even the smallest of European kingdoms had its share. At the top of the tree, the big boys, like Kaiser Wilhelm of Germany. To many, a handshake, or a pat on the head from him was worth an accolade. Tsar Nicholas of Russia, celebrating his birthday with a parade along with his small son, both soon to know violent death. And along with the big chaps, a host of smaller ones, the King of Serbia, to name just one in the Balkans, and the last of a long line, the Sultan of Turkey. Alfonso of Spain on a visit to France. No kings there, only a president. But being France, that didn't lessen the glamour one jot. For position and privilege, the world was indeed a solid place. As shining and secure as the very sun that beat upon their elegant parasols, the sun that beat upon those who strolled the decks of a great ship that day in 1912 when she left Britain for New York on her maiden voyage. That day, to the millionaire in the stateroom, to the Irish emigrant in the steerage, to proud Captain Smith on her bridge, the SS Titanic appeared the very symbol of a way of life prosperous, inevitable, and everlasting. was Liverpool, not so very long after that day of sailing, port of registration for a ship that was destined never to know its keys. There a stunned multitude read the notices giving the names of those of the Titanic, those lost and those saved. Those saved. Just a few hundred out of a total of over 2,000. There's the real privilege, there's the real wealth, for they still had their lives. A disaster, a legend, and a lesson. A lesson that in the face of nature, no ship is unsinkable, all men are equal. A lesson that in the eyes of God, even the Titanic is minute.